their focus had been on changing the requirements rather than doing us anything about my allegations. In other words, the design wasn't changed at all. In 2006, Weldon was fired for allegedly making threatening and inappropriate remarks about a colleague. Weldon says he was fired because he would not stop criticizing the composite design of the 787. Even after all he says he's endured, Weldon still considers himself a Boeing man. I love the company. They're paying for my retirement. I'm concerned about Boeing's long-term success, not for any perceived short-term stock advantages, bonuses, and things like that. Weldon says he decided to sit down for this interview because he and others inside Boeing continue to be concerned about the safety of the 787 design. Boeing is way down the pike, of course, now having had to roll out and we need to deliver by May of 2008 in order to stay on schedule. And to, to let this thing go on to, for this length of, of time, I just practically unbelievable to me. As Boeing and Airbus use more composites to manufacture commercial airplanes, a debate has emerged over how the airlines can best maintain and detect damage of this reinforced plastic material. Airplane makers say visual inspections are sufficient to detect any serious damage. But many composite experts say visual inspections are inadequate, and they urge airlines to invest in high-tech tools if they want to fly a composite airplane safely. One of the selling points of the new 787 is lower maintenance costs because the composite airframe won't corrode or rust. Boeing says the maintenance costs will be cut by 30 percent. They also say that detailed visual inspections on a periodic basis should be sufficient to detect serious damage to the composite material. We asked composite expert David Moss if he agreed. No. Almost anybody I know in the composite field uh, does not agree with that statement. It is very easy to have serious damage in a composite that is not visible. I know the reason that they made the statement, but I, I believe that's a, a, a false statement. You said you think you understand the reason. What yes. reason could there be? During certification, they will intentionally put flaws um, and they will intentionally impact the composites to create internal damage that can't be seen. And then they will apply repeated loads for two lifetimes uh, of, of service and prove that that damage will not propagate. It's a complex situation. The statement that if a composite has no visible damage, it therefore is perfectly safe to fly, is not true. Vince Weldon, a former Boeing engineer, explained how composites were marketed to the airlines. They've even gone around to the airlines and they give them a piece of aluminum, beat on it with this hammer. And of course, they'll, it'll, it'll dent immediately. And they said, now take this piece of composite structure and beat on it with a hammer. And the hammer bounces off of it. Pretty impressive. Well, no, it's not impressive at all to anyone who knows what, what's go actually going on. <laughs> but it's very deceiving because where the damage is, it's micro cracking that you can't see. And you have to, have to use ultrasound ins inspection to determine it. But what it does, it builds up internal damage uh, to the structure. Once you start getting a flaw in the composite structure that starts being able to uh, entrain moisture like water on a humid day and every day you fly you're going to go from a hot humid environment to a cold very cold dry environment and every time that water freezes it expands and it breaks a few more fibers and what do you have after three four five years of that happening see these are elements of composite structure that aren't fully understood Commercial airplanes go through a lot of wear and tear, everything from baggage carts banging against them to turbulence in the skies. Your point is, well, this can be deceiving because the damage would be in the interior. This is all so subjective. You know, this is like, this is like a convenient operation in order to keep things flying and, 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 and tell everybody that everything's okay. But everything may not be okay. 
Well, what I have here is a piece of composite laminate that has been impacted. Joseph Rako, with the consulting company Exponent, showed us what damaged composites look like. I don't see it. It all looks like just every other piece you've shown me. Right. There is no strong indication of the impact on the surface of the composite. But then Rako took this damaged piece of composite and put it under a special ultrasound scanner in the lab. This ultrasound machine is similar to technology used to see a baby inside a mother's womb. As the machine scans back and forth on the composite piece, we start to see the image develop on the screen. The information that this machine provides allows us to quantify the level of damage and correlate that level of damage with any sort of potential safety hazard that it is associated with. And as we spoke earlier, if you did a visual examination, you wouldn't have any indication of this. If you remember when we looked at the piece, there was not this level of indication of damage on the surface. It wasn't until we put the piece into the machine that we were able to see what sort of damage lies under the surface. At a time when manufacturers and airlines are trying to cut back on costs, this new technology is not cheap. Just one of the Sonoscan machines costs about $150,000. Moss advocates the use of inspection tools like tap tests, ultrasound, shirography, and embedded sensors to help detect damaged composites, especially when a composite part has a history of trouble. To sort of ignore the tools that you have at your disposal because you want to save a couple of hours of inspection time is, is almost criminal. Boeing and Airbus use inspection tools during manufacturing, but say they are only needed if damage is visible once a plane is in surface. Fueling the debate about how to keep pace with this new material are vague federal guidelines and the history of an older Airbus airplane, where visual inspections did not catch damage. In 2001, American Airlines Flight 587 crashed after its composite tail fin broke off and landed in Jamaica Bay, New York. Federal investigators rule that pilot error, rather than composite failure, was the cause of that accident. But some people were skeptical. In 60 years of commercial aviation flying large jet aircraft, no pilot has ever manipulated the rudders to cause the tail of his airplane to fall off. It's always easier to blame a deceased pilot who can't defend himself. Todd Wissing is a pilot who flew the Airbus A300 the same model that crashed in New York. He says there will always be controversy over the cause of that crash. What is clear, says Wissing, is this technology needs a more thorough inspection regime. After 587, we started paying attention to the way that the inspections were occurring on these composite materials. What struck us was that these were 21st century materials. We think that you should use sophisticated 21st century methods to inspect them that can find the damage. Sometimes pilots and mechanics can see problems with the composite tail section on the Airbus in question, says Wissing, specifically with the rudders and elevators when they soak up water and other fluid. Sometimes on the walk around you could look up on the underside of the tail and see a bubble and uh, you, you would have to check to see whether that was a repair or whether that was a new problem because uh, if water got underneath the skin of the tail uh, it would look pretty much the same as the repair. So you'd have to check with maintenance to see if it, if it had been repaired. But damage is not always visible, says Moss, who told us about an incident on March 6, 2005, in which problems were not caught in time. This was a Canadian aircraft, Air Transat, that was actually taking off from Cuba, and all of a sudden the composite rudder, which is the control surface on the fin, simply departed the airplane which is to say it broke off. It just broke off almost completely. That air transit plane was an Airbus A310, and it landed safely. Today, foreign air carriers, American Airlines, and FedEx fly some of the Airbus planes in question. After the rudder incident, the FAA issued a mandatory one-time inspection of certain Airbus airplanes. They said, not only look at this rudder visually of the remaining ones in the fleet, this time use a tap test. No problems were found. 